Hi everyone, uh, greetings from West Yorkshire and welcome back to my channel. Now, the other day we were greeted with fog in the Wharfdale Valley where I live, so I thought it would be a great opportunity to get out with the camera and hopefully uh, get some atmospheric pictures of my hometown of Otley. I use my Roliflex 3.5F uh, to take all the pictures. I also use the still working light meter, can you believe, uh, on this camera. Now, I didn't take a tripod, and I'll uh, explain that in the video. Uh, all the shots were taken handheld, so with the light being so poor, I needed to use uh, fast shutter speeds uh, without having to open the aperture too wide and lose uh, depth of field. I used a uh, Kodak Tri-X, uh, which Kodak rated at uh, 400 ISO. However, I rated uh, it at 1600 ISO to give me the hand audible shutter speeds. So rather than push process the film to 1600 ISO, which would involve me having to increase the development time, which in turn would increase the contrast, I would lose shadow detail and I would get an, uh, an increase in grain size. I developed the uh, film in diaphine. Now the results were perfect. No harsh tones, natural looking images you would expect to see in foggy conditions. Also uh, very sharp, and the grain size was just right, giving a, a beautiful a textural quality to the pictures. You know, it's uh, often said that Triex and Diaphine are a perfect uh, match, and uh, after trying it, I have to agree with that statement. But Diaphine's not the perfect developer for everyone. Uh, it's not a perfect developer for darkroom users. Often the negatives are quite flat. However, for scanning, they're about as good as it gets, really allowing you to have complete control over contrast in the editing process. Now, this is uh, part one of this foggy day. Uh, part two will be in the next video, where I went out and did some night photography, again in Otley. A totally different approach uh, for this. Uh, same camera though, however, different film and developer. So stay tuned, I'm sure you'll find it an enjoyable uh, video to watch and uh, you might gain some uh, knowledge from it. So, on with the video, Otley and the Foggy Day. So it's a very foggy day today in Otley, so I thought I'd just come out. Uh, we don't often get a lot of fog, uh, so I, I just thought I'd come out and take some pictures uh, around Otley, and the first one I'm going to photograph is this old uh, chimney in the mist. And you can see this is the view through the Roliflex viewfinder. I've got uh, Kodak Tri X ray um, loaded in the camera. I'm going to develop it in Diafine. I've rated it at uh, 1600 ISO. And I'm going to use the uh, Roliflex meter on the camera. That's this uh, meter on the camera to take the light readings and hopefully it'll work. So I'll take this first picture. This is the uh, weir at Ockley and in the distance, in the mist, uh, it used to be a place called Garnet's Mill, a paper mill. But now that's been uh, knocked down and and converted into a uh, modern housing, which uh, in some ways is a, a shame. It's losing the heritage of the place, really. But anyway, I've just taken a picture with the Roliflex, uh, looking over the way towards those buildings, and just see what it turns out like. <laughs> Everything's a little bit dull in the Roliflex viewfinder, but I'm hoping they'll turn out. So I'll just carry on walking about and see what else we can find in this mist. I've just taken a picture of some uh, 
swans a bit further up couldn't record that I had to do it quickly so I think that one might turn out quite nice actually so just keep walking around it seems to be getting the uh, not clearing up getting foggier I think I'm going to take a photograph of this lamp and then we've got the church spire uh, in the mist just showing through I just think it might, uh, might make a nice uh, angle with the path going down so I'll get the camera out and take a picture I think the exposure is around about uh, 250 f11 So I've just seen this uh, composition between the trees and then we've got the old bridge with the lovely reflection in the still water. I'll probably get lower down with the shot. Keep in mind this is square format so you're seeing a lot more in this uh, GoPro picture than what I see through the Rolleiflex viewfinder. So I'm going to uh, take a light rate meter read and take that shot and see how it turns out. I think some of the best shots uh, in uh, misty conditions is where you've got something dark in the foreground and obviously it goes lighter in the background with the, the mist and if it's misty enough it'll slowly disappear out of the uh, frame. Um, so that's what I'm looking for but it's not always easy to find those uh, subjects. So I'll just carry on walking about. I might go into the town centre now away from the river, river and uh, see if I can see some nice wet coals. Right, found a nice uh, old cobble straight. So I'll get the camera set up. Probably get a little bit lower down for this. And uh, take this picture. Just finding the right angle. Do I shoot up or do I shoot downwards? I'll just have a look around, see what I can see. This, uh, this monument here, uh, it was built in remembrance for the navvies that build the Bramall up tunnel um, is to replicate the actual tunnel itself you can see that might go down there, you might see it better maybe just see it there you can probably see it better than that angle yeah that's the older Memorial to navvies that died as I say and building that uh, deep long tunnel that goes under the village of Bramup again that's in West Yorkshire not too far from here actually I've taken some pinhole pictures of that so you can see those on my website so I'll get set up and take this picture now right I've just taken that shot uh, I decided rather than uh, taking the photograph looking up the path I took it uh, from this sort of angle looking, looking down we get the railings at both sides and they did get lower down to get some of the path in so hopefully that'll turn out I'm just going to go to a, a part of Otley where there's um, 
the chimney that I took previously. I noticed there were some interesting uh, shapes and angles on a roof that I could use in the foreground to photograph the chimney. So I'm just gonna have a walk up there and, and see what that's, to, that's gonna look like. So that's the chimney with those interesting roof uh, shapes. But unfortunately, I don't think, turn my alarm off. Unfortunately, I don't think it's going to work because I need to get closer and as I get closer, I start to lose the, the effect of the chimney. So I'm not gonna bother with that. But I have seen this, this is an old uh, wharf bank mills as they call it. And I'm going to photograph this one, I think, looking upwards, something like that. So that's the plan. So I'll get the camera out and uh, take the shot. You know, the Roliflex, it's a, a really beautiful camera to work with. Uh, when you look down, all the controls, uh, shut, aperture, shutter, exposure meter, exposure compensation, you can see, see it all looking down. And the, the viewfinder on it is amazing really. So if we lift the camera up, we've got the waist level viewfinder, but you can press the front open on that and then look through the back of the camera, get your eye right up to that and uh, you can actually use it at eye level. Um, at normal distances, you won't get any, you won't notice the parallax error. But you can also use the camera uh, with this little uh, magnifying viewfinder, and it gives you a small area of the of the um, the view of the lens is seen. You can actually focus with that. Uh, it's a little bit tricky to use, but uh, for close-up work, it's brilliant. So all in all, the roll effects is a, is a, a really really easy uh, quality camera to use and as I say I've not used this camera as much as uh, I would like to do Pro possibly for the fear of just damaging it or wearing it out but uh, I'm starting to use it a little bit more these days so I just thought I'd show you that as I say the viewfinder is absolutely superb um, if we press that and then you've got your magnifying finder on that and for photographing things like this subject what the uh, wharf, de wharf uh, bank mills I'll just try see if I can show you because I haven't got a tripod with me today but if I step back see if you can show you what I'm seeing there so you can see through there it's dead easy to use as you can see you've got your aperture on the lens you can control on the shutter speed you can see the exposure meter exposure compensation below the mist starting to go a little bit now it's coming a little bit brighter so i've just timed it right i think so i'll just uh walk back to the to the car in the town center and uh see if i can find one more shot to take to use the roll up It's nice sometimes to come out, as I say, in these conditions because you do get a, a different look and feel to your images. Right, this is the last shot of the day. I'm photographing these old cottages with this nice wet flagging, which will be original. With the, with the uh, flags leading inwards and following the curve of the cottages. Just think you might take a, a nice picture of that. So, as I say, it's the last shot of the day. I'll go home now and get these developed and uh, uh, again, hopefully they'll all turn out. But if they do, you'll see them. If they don't, there won't be a video. So back to the car and into the dark room.
spot the town centre. Statue of uh, Thomas Chippendale, the famous cabinet maker, born in Otley. That's looking up the main street. See, it's still foggy uh, on what they call a shebbing, um, but it's clear in the, in the town centre now. So, as I say, I think I timed it just about right. Uh, another reason that I have. Uh, uh, come out uh, today with the uh, camera not just because it's a, a lovely foggy day which should uh, produce some nice atmospheric pictures but also for a, a medical reason uh, somehow I've trapped a, a nerve uh, in the bottom of my back and I think it's a sciatic nerve and it's causing me to have pain down the right hand leg and it moves all the time it can be the top of the leg it can be the bottom of the leg sometimes it feels like my ankle's broken but uh, I found that walking actually eases that pain. So from about eight o'clock this morning, all I've done is walk, walk the dog, and then walk around Otley with the camera. So apart from coming out on a foggy day, I've also come out for a medical reason to try and ease uh, the pain that I've got in my leg. But it does work, uh, I'm not limping anymore, but uh, hopefully when I get home and sit down, it might have, uh, uh, cured it a little bit fingers crossed so that's a uh, another view looking up uh, the main street in, in Otley this is one of the many types of churches around here Hiya. Hello. Right. Yeah, thank you. Good. So that's the uh, little outing done with now. I'm back home. I'll get the film out of the Roly Flex and get the. Uh, Get, get it developed to see if everything's turned out okay. I think that's the, the, the fun of uh, film photography. I've had the enjoyment of going out with the camera and using it, uh, and then I've got this anticipation all the time, this, is, I would call it excitement, of developing the film. And uh, I won't know until I've done that to uh, see if I've got the exposures uh, correct, the composition, etc. Unlike uh, using a, a digital camera where uh, you know, you take the picture, preview it. If you don't like it, delete it and then take another one and, until you get it right. Uh, this way, it's a bit of a waiting game, but I do find it a lot more fun. I know it's not for everybody. Some people love the convenience of using a, a digital camera. But uh, for me, I prefer working this way. Anyway, today I used a Kodak Tri-X rated at uh, 1600 ISO. Its normal rating is a uh, 400, uh, but I'm going to develop the film, as I mentioned before, in in uh, Diafine, which is a two-part compensating developer. Diafine works by putting the part A into the developing tank first, leaving it for a, a certain amount of time, and once that's done, you pour you pour part B in, which is the activator, and that develops that develops the film. Diafine works better, uh, especially with Tri-X, uh, this way than push processing the film, where you would underexpose the picture, in this case, by two stops, but you would compensate by extending the development time. Now, that way you get contrasting negatives, but you do also get an increase in grain size, and uh, you do lose uh, shadow detail. I know some people like to work like that, and they like the effect of it, certain pictures I've seen, I, I like the look of it. But with Diafine, I think uh, it works in, in a better way because the way I work, uh, I scan the negatives and then I've got control of the contrast uh, when I'm editing the pictures on the computer. So that's one reason uh, why I used Diafine. 
and rated trikes at uh, 1600 ISO. But there are other reasons. Um, one is to do with shutter speeds. If I'd have gone out today with the Ilford FP4, which I normally rate, uh, I think about uh, 80 ISO, and let's say, for example, I was getting a shutter speed of 1 60th of a second, that's not really fast enough to handhold the Roliflex without getting a uh, camera shake. You really should be working round about, uh, at the minimum, 125th of a second. But because I've rated it two stops faster, the film, it means that 1 60th of a second becomes 250th of a second. So I ensure that I get sharper pictures. The other reason is uh, I get uh, more depth of field because I can stop the aperture down to a smaller aperture. So there are advantages uh, working uh, this way on days like today where it's uh, re really dull and foggy. And the other reason for me, uh, because I have this uh, back uh, stroke leg problem at the moment, it, mean, it meant that uh, I didn't have to carry uh, a tripod out today. All I had was the, the, the Roliflex itself, uh, which is not that heavy to carry about. So those are the reasons why I rated Triax at 1600 ISO. So that's it, the end of the video. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, please leave, leave a message below and I'll get back to you. If you've liked the content, please give me a like or better still, uh, subscribe to my channel and uh, hit that bell button because then you'll get a notification when I upload videos. So uh, once again, uh, until the next time, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.